Hey everyone, welcome to this series which is featuring this 8 year old Crip Orchid stallion named Mojave and he was brought to Sweet Bow Horses which is a place in Central California focusing on the gentling, trainability, and adoption of Mustangs and he was brought here to get help from me to get him gentle enough to go into surgery to make him not a Crip Orchid. I also forgot to mention that he is completely wild and unhandled. I believe they got the halter on him by putting him in a chute. He did originally have a lead rope on, but I think he broke it off. So this is his very first session working on gentling. I did end up cropping a few pieces out because my camera only went in a small span. I didn't have anyone videoing for me, so I just had it when he was on screen. So right now, I'm just trying to get his attention and his interest focused on me. So you saw me kind of smacking my hand on my thigh, that's to add a little bit of energy to drive him forward. As soon as he looks at me and faces me, I back up to invite him in. Now luckily, this suit is a little bit curious, so you'll see him walk in a few times and sniff the lead rope in the halter, and he's pretty good at facing up to me. So anytime he gets stuck by looking out or straight forward, you'll see me add energy by smacking my hand on the thigh. I've kind of resorted to that method, it seems to work best rather than holding a whip initially. It just creates a lighter type of energy. So I totally encourage them checking out the tools and whatever's in the round pen, so I just kind of let him do his thing while he's doing that, and I stand there and just hang out in his presence, make sure he knows I'm not a threat. So you see, every time he gives me those two eyes, I back up to give him some space. Because of the distance I'm at, what I started to do to increase my approach distance to him is I put my arm out. Now, what I should have done here was as soon as he started kind of flicking his ears at me, I should have backed up to acknowledge his kind of, I don't know, disturbance or reluctance to me coming up and approaching him but he did end up reaching out to stiff my hand, so I backed up and rewarded that. But you can kind of pay attention to his ears, and it's a little bit of a precursor to what happens later on in this session. So I decided I wanted to go with the approach of having him move a little bit more. I figured he's a little bit lazy, so if I can create some energy in him, he may want to stand still and face up with me and hang around for a little bit longer. So again, the same approach. Every time he looks at me, I back up to drive him in. Now we're working on some changing directions. So I always have them switch to the inside initially, so it's less threatening. It's less of them turning their hindquarters towards me, which could put me in a vulnerable spot of them trying to kick. So to have them turn towards me, I back up to have them stop and have them look in, and then I go to the fence line, slowly go down it, and add that energy to the outside. So if he's not wanting to stop or turn in and look at me, I'll just back up as he's walking. So I keep pace with him. I was able to catch his eye here, and you can really see him thinking with his ears. That's probably one of his most expressive parts. You can see my very relaxed body language. I have my leg cocked. I'm kind of looking down. My shoulders are relaxed. So he's doing a little bit of avoiding by looking to the sides, moving away there. He's not really wanting to keep all his attention on me, so it may have been a little bit of pressure for him too soon. Although he's curious enough to reach out, as soon as he does, I retreat, and he gets more curious without me backing up to want to approach again. I'm going to stick with him again until he looks at me, try to keep my arm out. You can tell there's a lot of discomfort here, so I should have gone a little bit slower. Good. But I was getting a little bit greedy because he had already reached out and touched my hand twice, so I was looking for that again. Now this dude was tracking me a little bit, so you see I was, I was walking off screen there, he was following along. him around. 
around, probably having him change directions a couple more times. I was able to get him to the point again of coming in to sniff my hand. And now my goal when I'm pushing them around isn't necessarily for them to get sweaty, get tired, get hot. It's to make them think. And it's more for the direction changes than anything. Right here, you can see he's comfortable enough with me trying to reach my hand up to approach and touch his face. However, he's still a little bit concerned. You can see as he's walking in without me inviting him in. So I figured, let me add some distance to this, and I'll hold the stick out as an extension of my arm and see if he wants to check that out instead. He doesn't seem like he's too sensitive with his face, which is good. Now, if I'm approaching him and he gets uncomfortable, it's my responsibility to respond to that, acknowledge it, let him know that I hear him. But now if he starts approaching me, then that's my responsibility to kind of take control and be like, hey, you're getting into my bubble. So it goes two ways. I have to listen to him when I'm approaching him and he's uncomfortable, but it has to be enough where I can break through the barrier. But now if he's approaching me and I'm uncomfortable, then I need to make sure I hold my boundaries up. So I'm super happy there with him trying to think through it, sniff the whip. I'm going to keep with him here, keep walking until he stops. Again, never want that butt to turn towards me, so I'm immediately going to get him to change directions again. It's similar to when you're round penning one and they change without you asking. You want to make sure they keep tracking the way that you ask them to track. So reaching the whip out again, just waiting for him to acknowledge it, and then I'll release. So he's slightly tipping his nose towards it, now he's checking it out, so I'm going to give him the release there. For right now, I think this dude is doing great in his session. This is only the first session, I've worked him for maybe about 10 minutes, and we're getting some touches to the nose with the stick, and I did get a few initially with my hand. Now what I'm working on is being able to touch the bottom piece of the halter with the whip and get it to move around, kind of mimicking if my hand were go down there to put on a leap rope. Again, got a little uncomfortable with that, so we went back to a nose touch, and then I retreated. He wandered off off of that, so I started to have him move around again. Super light, you can tell I'm not pushing him hard, and he's already started to pick up this little trot cadence that he likes to go into. So invite him in here, and then he starts to get a little too comfortable and wants to charge me. So I stand my ground, push him back out, make sure I'm direct in the direction I have him going. And just again, quietly push him that way. I'm not going to make him really run or get after him. I'm just going to ask for a direction change and see if I can get a little bit of control of the speed again. I'm not going to get super angry, get after him. I'm going to keep everything calm, but now I'm going to be a little bit more cautious of using that backup to draw him in. Pretty similar to Roulette, if you remember her. She got pretty comfortable with me backing up to draw her in, giving her space. I used that as her reward, and eventually I had to change my tactics and not back up to invite her in. So again, here you can see that I'm matching his footfall, sticking right with him. Just trying to get him to relax down again, touch the stick, and see that's all that I'm looking for from him saying, hey buddy, we've done this a couple times now, this is all I want from you. Good, he didn't settle down, so we ended up going around a little bit more. So I had a few people watching this session there, and they got nervous when he charged me, and they were like, oh, how do you handle that? And they were super surprised at me just kind of standing there and creating my barrier and pushing him off. So... He got a little bit worked up after that because he was like, whoa, she made me trot around a little bit after I charged her. But anyways, those people that were surprised, I was like, well, I've had a lot of practice with roulette and other horses wanting to charge me and be aggressive. So that worked in my favor here. And I know that it's just better if you stand your ground, you can't back up or back out of the way. Good. So here I very cautiously back up to invite him in again. And I want to end on a good note with this dude, so even if that just means touching and rubbing his face with a stick. 
good. And you can see even earlier on when I was talking about the ears and all of his body language, I went to pick up that stick, so then I would have something in my hand to kind of block him if he did decide to want to charge me. But now we're doing great. We're getting forehead rubs. I'm feeling okay with him approaching me again. I'm just going at a slower pace and letting him approach me on his time. Good, and that's a really good point to end the session at. So I'm going to walk out of his pen, leave him to be. And he already knows the system of how to leave the pen to get back into his rest area. But that was his very first session. We made a lot of progress. We had a little bit of issue with the charging and him wanting to kind of be in my space. But I think we worked through it here. I'm super happy with how he did. And I hope you guys tune in for session two. Thank you for watching.